a special helmet and visor placed on your head. So literally all images, subliminal images that come through, uh, they use the EBL. What's that? Uh, electronic brain link. On the what does that involve? Well that involves the images directly being converted from the computers into images acceptable by the brain. They're implanted, they're held there until activated at a later time by. So is this a direct electrical connection to, to, your, to your mind? or? You're di you're, you are connected directly to the seat, which, as I say, comes through the computer. So, yeah, you're interfacing. Literally, it's man and machine as one. So is there any psychic use for this? Or? They use mostly psychics there. Um, they enhance anyone with any level of psychic ability. If they can make use of that. I mean, uh, the military use people for remote viewing um, targets in military installations in other countries. So anyone with a, any trace of psychic ability in them, yeah, they'll enhance that considerably. PK, a remote viewing, and a number of other bits and pieces. Whatever. So are they able to see what you're seeing in your head, or is it just a one-way thing and then to you? Um, they can't actually see, not, not visually uh, see what you're seeing. They just know what they're pumping through to you, so they, they virtually know what's happening anyway. So. so how do they know that you're... Well, so they give simple tasks first, like say, um, two days after being in the trip seat, then they'll set you a task, and if you can uh, perform that task 100%, they know it's worked, and then they can actually program more sophisticated tasks for you at a later date. What sort of things do they use on you? Um, Basically, the first thing was to erase, once everything had gone in, was to um, erase from my conscious memory everything about the base. So come January of 80, when they brain scrambled me, for want of a better term, it was a, an erasure job uh, done on me, but they knew at some stage that someone would be able to retrieve certain I mean, parts. I mean, obviously you're talking about this now, uh, 16 years later. Uh, how is it that you're able to even talk about it or discuss it? Well, during 1988, uh, I underwent a truck stop event. This is where the defence, with the experimentation, but certainly both sides, Allied and Axis, were... So how do you base that criteria? On the information I was shown. At Peasmore? At Peasmore and one or two other locations, yeah. So in many regards, you're sort of like an English Bob Lazar. You've been presented with information in a, in a base, and do you think so? There are similarities, but I don't claim to have um, had any physical um, occasions with the machinery whatsoever. I mean, a lowly security guard, if you like. So what other activity that happened there as such? Well, as I say, they've got their own created life forms. Yeah, um, the programmable, the PGLFs. The PGLFs, so... And how many of them are there there, and what sort of quantity are, are we dealing with? I would imagine hundreds, I mean, of each. So how many did in you three see? stages. Right. The, the tiny uh, fetus-like uh, stage ones. And how, how are they generated? The actual mechanics behind that, I don't know. Right. I mean, as a security guard... So what did you see as such? Uh, they're, they're in, like, racks or pods, if you like. Yeah. Um, and there's row upon row of each of the three stages. Stage two and three use the same type of large rack. Yeah. And they're in certain pods. And there's obviously row and row and row on each level. Um, each what sort of size of container are we dealing with? Uh, the larger racks are about 40 foot long, 6 foot by 4 foot or thereabouts. Is this in some kind of a clinical ward or factory type environment? Or? Oh no, well, you know, it's more like a warehouse. I mean, literally they are stores. They call them the racks, the sheds. Yeah. And that's, you know, row after row these things are just stored there for use. These things are alive, obviously, yeah. but they're in a sleep state or...? Um, I mean, you mentioned before that you could actually walk up to them and you'd see an expression on them. Was that the human ones? 
Um, because they're, they're programmed directly from the essential computer systems, literally anything that goes in, they, yeah. they, they're programmed to go and do. They haven't literally minds of their own as such, but you, you, you can get something out of them. I mean... In what way? Well, it was a bit of a standing joke between the four British um, security guards there. But there was something strange about the faces of these little creatures. And uh, two of them were joking one afternoon and saying, well, look, you get a screwdriver and you just carefully prise off this black thing on his face. Right, so there, you're, you can walk up to them and there, you can touch them. Well, you can pick one up. You yeah. literally shove it over your shoulder. They're so small and light, but very, very strong. You know, they, they, they are very, very strong. Very, um, yeah, you could literally, yeah, go and pick one up. So they're in sort of a, a stupor, a coma type status? Uh, stupor, yeah, stupor. Not, not a coma, because literally, um, once the programming starts, whoosh, off they go and do whatever they've got to go and, and do, you know, what they've been programmed to do, so... I don't really know how you can describe the state they're in. They're just, yeah, they're just suddenly, like automatons, they're switched on and off. And are the human derivatives of these? Oh, yeah. And what are they like? Um, well, this is the, the two that they used at Barnhill in Chingford in 74, totally different to the small grey like ones. Um, one was about six foot tall, completely featureless, had a, a face as such, but no eyes, mouth, nose, none of that. Yeah. Very, very long hair, so that was a close what to human What colour of hair do they have? Blonde, that was blonde. blonde hair. And the second one was again about human size, but completely featureless. No uh, discernible features whatsoever. They also have a... So a you're talking sort of a perfect human or just a non-event of a human? Well, basically just a... Like a mannequin? Is that why it's called Project Mannequin? Well, that's a different story altogether. That, um, I mean, that so, was so a So these pale beings words. are not to do with mannequin? It's nothing. Mannequin is a project. But, but it's not what, these, what this is, what these creatures are. No, they're not mannequins. Um, no, uh, in terms of project name? No, the project name was devised, I mean it was changed, at first it was called Puppet Master. That was the name of the first project. It went into Mannequin. So when did Puppet Master start? Uh, about 58 in the States. The idea, because again they play on words, like most codes they use in any project, gives you an insight into what the project really is about. So Puppet Master, uh, Masters and Slaves. Yes. They were pulling the strings, literally. Yeah. Play on words. Yeah. They just changed Puppet so Master So we have the first making. type of, of grey, which were manufacturing and breeding and, and peas more. What's the second stage? Um, after the, the tinies, the tiddlers, yeah. we get to stage two, which I suppose if you relate PGs to humans, you'd have the baby, you'd have the teenager, then you'd have the adult. Right. Stage two is the teenager. What sort of age does it do? How long does it take for these things to come to, to be generated? Well, that's that quite that? rapid. That's that's a very strange thing about it. Between stages one and three, there's barely months. So between the time of uh, when I first started working there in August, September of 79, so by December, I was already seeing, from what used to be stage one, that's walking man stage three. So, very short period of time. So you were there for a very brief period of time? What, what, what As mind? actually a security officer. Obviously I still had connections on and off between uh, December 79 and beginning of 81. So right. there was still some connection with them. So you brought in there as a security officer just to simply get you on the base? Or would you do, 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 do you, you did a, a nine till five or a five hour week job or whatever? Uh, no.